Oh, hello. Hmm. Hmm? Sorry, what's that? I should talk sooner? So these slow introductions are hurting my channel? Right, I know what you're up to. You're just saying that because you're jealous. Okay, so what exactly is bolverism? It's a rhetorical fallacy in which a speaker assumes that their opponent's argument is wrong, and instead of disproving it, condescendingly explains why their opponent would have come to that conclusion. The term bolverism was coined by British writer C.S. Lewis in 1941. Lewis wrote in 1944, You must show that a man is wrong before you start explaining why he is wrong. The modern method is to assume without discussion that he is wrong and then distract his attention from this, the only real issue, by busily explaining how he became so silly. In the course of the last 15 years, I have found this vice so common that I have had to invent a name for it. I call it bolverism. Someday I'm going to write the biography of its imaginary inventor, X. Kill Bolver, whose destiny was determined at the age of five when he heard his mother say to his father, who had been maintaining that two sides of a triangle were together greater than a third, she said, Oh, you say that because you're a man. So that's what bolverism means. Um, let's look at some examples. Um, and people like to pretend that, you know, gender is some sort of a scientific, a biological thing because it deals with a person's internal sense of themselves and their presentation of themselves. When psychology and sociology are still sciences and deal heavily in that realm. Um, so what you end up with is this weird hill that people die on where all of a sudden anthropology, sociology, psychology aren't real science anymore. All the biology textbooks that talk about gender diversity and sexual diversity and transsexual people and transgender people, those aren't actual biology textbooks anymore. Those are new woke biology textbooks. And like they just they they build this insane little wall around their bizarrely narrow and parochial worldview just to protect their own comfort to, to remain in the heuristics that they grew up with. It's a very dogmatic way of thinking, and it's it's weird for people who claim to be pro-science to do. So, so you say in this uh, clip was was taken from the uh, Rationality Rules channel that um, the guest on the channel simply makes condescending assumptions about why anyone would oppose um, what they're saying about gender, what the opponents would call gender ideology. The only reason they would argue that they're uh, the kind of gender critical thought is because they want to feel safe in their own little box. It simply discounts and um, condescendingly denies the possibility that people who are gender critical have legitimate concerns about what the other side is saying. And that's just completely uh, dismissed in the clip that we just saw. Uh, let's look at another one. But like, the, if, if you don't know someone's gender, you use the word they and them. You you do it all the time. You don't actually have a problem with the language. You're just looking for an excuse to be a dick. And it's not working. Okay, so this one is saying that a person is a uh, quote-unquote a dick if somebody chooses not to use certain language. That they, if they choose not to use this language, there must be sinister uh, motivations behind that. They discount the possibility that perhaps this completely hypothetical person um, might be saying, hey, hey, look, um, that's a very interesting theory. It's a very interesting way you guys have a looking at the world. I, I just rather not participate in this language. Uh, thank you. Have fun. Goodbye. Um, th it could be just that. It could be that they just don't see the world that way, but that's not considered. That's They just assume that they have uh, bigoted, uh, sinister, ignorant, silly motivations for what they're saying. So the purpose of this video is to point out, well, to explain what bolverism is and put, to point out the examples. I'm not here to explain my views on gender. Maybe in another video I'll do that, but not here. So I just want to focus on bolverism. It's important to point out that bolverism 
occurs across the political spectrum. It's just not one side doing it. Um, it, it. It's very common. It was very common in 1941 when the coin was terminated. It's very common now. And um, in the example given, this uh, never-ending debate on gender, which just seems to have taken over the internet, uh, there is everything you can imagine. There's uh, good faith arguments on each side, and there are bad faith arguments on each side. So in speaking of, um, speaking of good faith um, arguments, I would encourage the viewers to watch the original video which I took the clips from. It's a, it's a good video, it has a lot of good arguments. I, I just didn't like these particular segments of the video. So whatever you, whatever you think about people who are gender critical, the kind of target of, of uh, the clips in the video, um, that they may well be wrong. I, I would just say that people have the right to be wrong. And you can be wrong and at the same time not have the worst possible motives ascribed to what, what you're saying to be virtually told you're an evildoer just for having an opinion, just for seeing the world differently. So as much as the uh, video had a lot of good arguments, they would do better to focus on the arguments they are making instead of uh, trying to caricature arguments from the other side. So that's bolverism. watch out for it. My name is John Alexander. Thank you very much for watching.